Hi, I'm Lucy and in this video we're going to look at how negative indices and fractional indices work. You should already know the other four laws of indices, but if you've forgotten, have a look at them first. So let's have a look at this question. Using the dividing indices law, we subtract the powers and we get x to the negative 2. If we wrote this question out in full as a fraction, like this, and then simplified it, we end up with everything cancelled on top, so the numerator is 1, and 2x's in the denominator. So we have 1 divided by x squared. So x to the power of 3 divided by x to the power of 5 is x to the negative 2, but it's also 1 divided by x squared. So see how x to the negative 2 is 1 divided by x squared. So for negative indices, we drop it down to the denominator and make it positive. Have a look at these examples to see the negative indices law in action. See how on the fourth one, only the x to the negative 3 drops down. This is because the negative 3 only belongs to the x. We would need brackets for it also to affect the 4. Have a look at these examples. What do you notice about the denominator? Hopefully, you can see that the denominator is the root of the number. So because these are a half, it is square root. A power of a third means the cube root. But what if the numerator isn't 1? So 3 over 2 and 2 over 3. What happens now? Can you see that the denominator is still the root of the number? So square root for these ones and cube root for these ones. But now the numerator raises the root to the power. So power of 3 for these ones and power of 2 for these ones. So this is the law of fractional indices. I just think of it as power over root. The power is on top because it makes things bigger and the root is on the bottom because it makes things smaller. So power over root. I always do the root first and the power second to keep the numbers small but you can actually do either one first. It doesn't matter. So give these questions a go. Pause the video, work out the answers, and click play when you're ready to check. Did you get them right? On that last one, we need to combine negative and fractional indices. I always do the negative first, then the root, then the power. But again, you can actually do it in any order. So these are the six laws of indices that help you solve complex sums involving powers and also are really important for lots of algebraic processes. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Comment below if you have any questions. Why not check out our Fuseco app as well? Until next time.